lot of people are gonna be really excited about that. Um, that's amazing, oh my goodness. Um, we're gonna keep uh, the show rolling. Our next performer has been on stage uh, at Say What before. Uh, it was been a couple months. I remember it was the lovely detective novel where we talked about the fog and the layers of the fog and it was foggy and he couldn't see. And the air was thick. It was beautiful. Uh, it was the most crazy detective story I've ever heard. Um, he is a main stage performer at Vancouver Theatre Sports. Please give a lovely warm welcome for Sean Stewart. <laughs> All right, so this is, hey, hi there in internet land. Um, this is also uh, to do with the fog, but this is the fog of the soul. Uh, this is a romance novel, but this isn't necessarily one of the romantic bits of the romance novel. This is a, uh, a bit of an exploration into the acting process. So I don't know if any of you have experience with the acting process. And it's, it's Vancouver, so I assume the staff, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is a, uh, this, uh, it's an actor. He's performing East of Eden on Broadway. <clears throat> Tony Valentino stared at a mirror and scowled. It wasn't the reflection that made him do that. It was the stuff inside his head. To do this part, he had to hate and to hurt. He had to feel the raw emotions that gave Cal his exposed nerve personality. Then he had to project them outward so that all the world could feel how it felt to be rejected. Everyone must know for themselves the dread reality of a world without love. He had read Steinbeck's book half a dozen times. He had walked the fields and hills of Salinas, smelled the scent of the hot grass laying down gratefully on the rich earth as he would sink into the lap of his beloved mother. Mother. <laughs> the word lasered into his mind as he meant it to and it set light to the feelings that were Cal's feelings. This dressing room was no longer on Broadway. No more was he an actor waiting for a curtain call and a hushed, expected audience. He had ceased to be Tony Valentino. He was Cal Trask. He was Steinbeck's Cain, on whom the Lord had set his mark. He was Adam's son, Eve's offspring. And he dwelled in the land of Nod, to the east of Eden. The name of the play. <laughs> The tap on the door was insistent. To Mr. Valentino, said the disembodied voice. In, a, in the cunning artificial dream, Tony Valentino stood up. He sleepwalked to the door and opened it. He ambled into the corridor and loped along the passageway toward the stage. His shoulders were hunched to protect himself from the slings and arrows, Shakespeare, that, that humanity <laughs> liked to throw at him. Yeah. <laughs> He flicked his fingers as he lied that he didn't care, and a smile of scorn played around the edges of his mouth. He caught sight of himself in the mirror, and he hated his beauty. <laughs> Been there. So he crunched up his face into a crushed cardboard expression that was supposed to mock his good looks, but only succeeded in emphasizing them. <laughs> The women would love him out there, damn them. <laughs> they always loved Cal. They were frightened of him. They were in awe of his unpredictable moods, yet fascinated by the way he recoiled from them until the very moment of their knee-trembling surrender. He despised them for loving him. He was so unlovable. That great truth he had gleaned from the stony ground of his childhood. He kicked out at a rubbish bin that was a metaphor for the world. <laughs> and he heard the muted hum of the audience behind the heavy curtains. It doesn't say what they're a metaphor for, so uh, fill that in yourself. Uh, the men out there would loathe him. They knew his secret. They recognized that he was deep down bad. And although they would always be his enemies, he respected them for being right. They were the half of humanity who had his number. They were the gender of his father and his, <laughs> and his ambivalent love for them lay curled up tight in the womb of his hatred. In the front seat of the dark and dark auditorium, Pat Parker's gut was tangled as Medusa's hair. James Dean had played this role in the famous Elia Kazan movie, 
and Pat could understand why girls committed suicide when he died. Tony's cow was deeper than Dean's, and it wasn't just that she was involved with him still, and therefore the very opposite of a, dis of a disinterested spectator. There was all the vulnerability of Dean's character, the shy, wounded charm, the touching eagerness to be accepted, standing beside the brittle defensiveness of the boy man who had learned in the hard school of childhood that grown-ups could not be counted on for love. But there was more than that. Tony's cow was strong in the midst of his weakness. His scars were deep inside, and the battles he fought were not with the world, but with himself. <laughs> he was walled away from people. They could whip his flesh, but they couldn't touch his soul. His essence was unavailable to them. <laughs> and, it was, and it was his essence that she wanted. Pat breathed in deeply, astounded at the depth of the emotions that sloshed around it within her. She was part critic, part psychiatrist, and all the time she was the one-time lover who recoiled from the possibility that the boy she still worshipped would never love her again. What do you think? Dick Latham leaned in toward her like a priest in a confessional. may have a different connotation than I originally intended. I can't describe it, said Pat. She cocked her head to one side, rolled her eyes to the ceiling, and splayed out her hands in her lap to emphasize the inadequacy of mere words. <laughs> Malibu by Pat Booth.